the last thing I'm going to show you is how to apply one point perspective to things that might exist in your drawings and things that are slightly more irregular. So I'm going to start by having my horizon line right across and I'm going to have my vanishing point and then I'm going to draw my object. So the first object I'm going to draw is maybe a brick floor, brick road, maybe it's the yellow brick road, running along. Now to do this, what I want to do is I want to draw all the lines running up of the bricks. The tricky step is understanding how much space to leave in between them. I probably should have measured out this front area to make all my bricks the same distance, but let's imagine that, you know, the Munchkins were doing something slightly different that day and tried to make, you know, different types of bricks. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go back in space. So I have to go to that back corner, but that's not going to work because if I do that, it's just that same line again. So I have to define a spot where the road ends and that's going to help me create that effect. So maybe this isn't a brick um, road, maybe it's a tiled floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this corner to this front corner. This is going to show me the spot where my lines cross. And by showing me the spot where my lines cross, I can figure out how to cut them across because I can see where everything cuts along and that allows me to make each section of this tiled floor get smaller and smaller as it goes back in space. You can see how in each section it goes from being quite long here smaller and smaller smaller going back in space and obviously I'll have to erase all my vanishing lines to make that make sense. Now that same rule applies if let's say you're doing the details on the side of a street. Maybe buildings or lamp posts or fences, all sorts of things. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to start by drawing two lines back to the vanishing point and then you're going to draw your front edge of the object and then you're going to draw your next one. You decide where the next one is. So what you want to do is you want to cut that in half. And so what you're going to do is you're going to use your ruler and you're going to measure the halfway point. So this is about 3.5 centimeters. So using that it would be about See, 1.5 would get me 3, probably about 1.7 is roughly the halfway point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this line in half through that center point. And that's going to show me where my next object should be. So what you want is you could run another vanishing line straight through the center of that first object and that's going to allow me to always know where I should be crossing my lines. I can help you see that what that might look like. So I'm just going to do this bit freehand. All I'm doing is drawing the sides of these fence posts. And now you could imagine what that might look like. So let's imagine what that might look like if I was to draw a house and put a window running through it. So I'm just 
Now what I want to do is I want to draw a window on this side. So I'm going to draw the general shape of it. And using vanishing lines, I'm going to draw the bottom and top edge of my window. But now I want to figure out where the center of this window is. The center on this side is easy because it's a front facing section. So obviously you just measure it and it tells you where the center is. But on here, if I was to measure at the center, it would put it in the wrong place. So what I want to do is I want to draw some cross lines. Okay, going corner to corner. And that's going to help me figure out the exact center of my window. When I erase those corner to corner lines, I can imagine this is my center window. You can put some curtains on it from the inside, nice little grade school style curtains. Okay, and I can imagine I'm looking in through a picture window into a house. So when you have to create different sorts of objects, sometimes it's not enough to have the lines going back to the vanishing point. Sometimes you have to run corner to corner because that helps you figure out how things connect to one another. Now another thing you might be trying to do in perspective is a letter. So I'm going to freehand these last ones. Okay. I'm just going to do some block letters. And I'm going to connect these down to my vanishing point. Again, I'm just doing these freehand, but I encourage all my students to use rulers. And now I'm going to draw the sections along here that are the back of my letter to help me define the space. Now the tricky part is erasing only the right lines and not every other line. Let's say I applied shadow to it so we could see these a little bit better. Then I can see how perspective works on a letter. And this would work on any letter. It just depends if you're drawing it in blocks or not. So these are the basic fundamentals of one point perspective.